Intersolar Middle East 2016. And we are together with Daniel Zivietz, Zivietz also, uh, who is the founder and CEO of Enerware, one of the most successful companies here in uh, Emirates, solar companies, and also he's representing the board of Clean uh, Energy Business Council, so Sarah was pushing me to speak to you because you are one of the guys who is uh, the most involved in the activities of the organization. So first maybe Daniel, before speaking about your company, just uh, very shortly, what, what is uh, the hottest in the activities and in the agenda of, of the council? I think on the on the agenda of the Clean Energy Business Council right now is the distributed uh, solar sector. Um, we've obviously seen a lot of successes here in the utility scale market. Um, a few months ago with the announcement of the DIWA project um, up to 800 megawatts um, at a record low price back then of 2.9 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, that was just beaten last week by the results of the Abu Dhabi utility scale tender, 350 megawatts or up to a gigawatt at uh, between 2.4 and 2.6 cents. Um, those are world record tariffs every time. Uh, so on the utility scale side, uh, the market is hot, but if you take a look at the, the work that the Clean Energy Business Council does, um, we try to push regulation to the next level. And, and the truth is that in this market, the utility scale projects are starting to work. They, take, um, they work on the existing regulatory structure. They work under the existing project and IPP procurement framework. So in terms of regulatory change, there's not a lot required. It's already running. When you take a look at the distributed solar space, both on-grid and off-grid, um, the regulation is in a very early stage. Only Dubai has started a net metering program that is still... Uh, that is a Sh Shams program. program, yes. The Shams Dubai program, yes. Um, that started a year and a half ago that, um, let's say, is starting to... To, to move, but I don't think at the at the world record speed that that Dubai normally sets itself as a standard. Um, and at the same time, there is still a number of areas in the region, Abu Dhabi, the Northern Emirates, and the UAE, um, Oman, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi, where nothing is happening in the distributed uh, generation sector. So from a Clean Energy Business point, uh, Council point of view, what we try is to, to educate decision makers, regulators, and to to try to push the policy making and the market forward also in the distributed space. Okay. So uh, two days ago I was speaking with the CEO of Diva and uh, today also someone told me that uh, there is only one utility here in Dubai but actually it's not true yes because uh, you are representing the other utility. Yes? So could you tell us more about your activities actually? Yes, it is funny. Um, I, I realized I did the math earlier today. We are the sixth largest utility in the in the UAE and the second largest private one. Wow. Um, which, okay, fine. Most of the other ones out of the, the top six, uh, four are state utilities. Uh, Adwia, Diwa, uh, Siwa and Fiwa are the, the government monopolies in, in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah and the Northern Emirates. And then there is a few niches where, um, for some reason, the grid doesn't reach. And that's the case in Ras Khaimah, where uh, another utility company is operating with about 100 megawatt of gas-fired power plants. Um, and then we go to the areas where, where the distribution grid doesn't reach, um, the, uh, the oil and gas sector in Abu Dhabi, the desert camps, the construction sites in Dubai. Uh, we're now running an, an island resort, a five-star uh, resort on an island that is also not connected to the grid. Um, and we currently have a capacity of about 10 to 12 MVA. Um, and for better or for worse, that's still fairly small, but, but yeah, we're in the top 10 of the utilities in, in the UAE and the second largest private one. Uh, so it's quite interesting, yeah, because this is like a, uh, the new business model, actually, yes, and especially, I mean, new business model, let's say, for the clean energies, yes, because before it was mainly uh, driven by the diesel generators and stuff, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, if you take a look at the off-grid sector, yes, there was the, the standard business model is generator rental. Um, so let's say if you're a construction company and you run a construction site office or your labor camp, uh, you would buy or you would rent diesel generators. Um, that was fine as long as diesel prices were low um, and solar prices were high, so there was no, it, it didn't make sense to, to go solar. Um, I think today the situation is different. Solar equipment prices and solar power prices have come down tremendously. Um, the oil price and thereby the diesel price has, has rebounded and in most places in this region the, the subsidies are being removed on the, on the liquid fuel side. So diesel is more expensive than it used to be, solar is cheaper. So today there is a case for, for solar diesel hybrid plants and increasingly even solar battery systems. Ah, so uh, what is the difference, let's say, in the price if you compare to diesel generator and uh, if the customer comes to you? Yeah. So a diesel generator at the current fuel price in the UAE will cost you anywhere between 15 and 25 dollar cents. So 
call it uh, 60 to 100 fills per kilowatt hour. Um, the reason for that is the, for the wide span is that it dramatically depends on the size of your installation, the efficiency, uh, the load curve, uh, how much backup you want. Um, by and large, for a similar sized project with the same load curve, a solar diesel system will be 10 to 15 percent cheaper. Um, batteries make sense only for small projects under 100 kilowatts, but uh, but that's rapidly uh, increasing as fall prices of batteries are falling. But uh, in general, like. Uh uh, customers, so they don't need any maintenance yeah, during the, the whole period, yeah, because you are taking care about everything, yeah? so they don't have to take care about buying oil and stuff. Yeah? Uh, that is true. So number one, the maintenance requirements for solar equipment are, are much lower than for a generator, right? There are no moving parts. Um, uh, some cleaning is still required, but yes, we, we take care of that. Uh, we, in the end, are power providers. So rather than, than just renting a diesel generator and buying your own fuel and maintaining it, um, we provide so you provide uh, kilowatt hours 24-7 uh, around the clock, uh, and the customer just pays the monthly energy bill like they would to, to Diwa or any other utility company. Oh, so this is uh, interesting, yeah, because it can be also replicated to, I mean, all the countries in the region, yeah? and even Africa. Yeah? Yes, so fundamentally, as, as soon as um, the economics are there, so fuel prices are rising. Oman this year liberalized uh, their, their fuel prices. Um, so we're cost competitive today in the UAE, in Oman, um, probably in Qatar. Um, Kuwait still has much lower, lower prices, and Saudi Arabia is planning to reduce subsidies, but it hasn't yet. So at this moment, uh, we're active in the UAE and in Oman and in Nigeria. Um, and we expect that, that as fuel subsidies are being removed, uh, that we will expand to, to other countries in the region. So Daniel, last question. Uh, where would you see uh, your company, let's say, in three years? I think we'll be running 50 megawatts, maybe 100 megawatts of, of mini grids. Um, I think we'll start to merge, we'll, we'll start to see um, a convergence of technical solutions between on-grid and off-grid. Um, in the on-grid sector, there are still industrial companies that are capacity constrained. Um, so they don't, they, they have a grid connection, but not to the amount that they would want. And I think ultimately the upcoming solar battery, the, the storage solutions that are coming up now, um, fit the same purpose. Whether you shave peaks for a diesel generator in summer or you shave peaks on the grid, it's the same technical con uh, configuration. So I think we'll see a bit of a convergence between the technical solutions and, and we'll be running a portfolio of, of hopefully at least dozens, if we're lucky, hundreds of megawatts of power in places where the government grid doesn't reach or is not sufficient for the actual requirement of the customers in that location. So you think uh, the future of your company will be sunny, yes? Like uh, the future of the solar business in the region, yes? Well, let's put it this way. It took a long while to get started. We have tripled our revenue since last year. We're hoping to double it next year. Uh, inshallah, as they say here, all dependent on the on the oil prices. But but uh, if, if the current trend in both fuel and solar prices stays as it is, we'll definitely grow. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, that was Solar PV TV together with uh, Daniel Zivis, who is founder and CEO of Enerware, the company which is provide, I mean, the second uh, largest private utility, yes, in the, in the country. And also a person who is very involved in the activities, very important activities, policy activities of uh, Clean Energy Business Council. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for watching.